Welcome to the Kingsford Flivver Flash. I'm Coach Van Dusen. This is Season 21, Episode 3, a Flivver Flashback with my cousin, Curtis Van Dusen. Curtis is a 2002 Kingsford High School graduate, and while he was here at Kingsford, he played quarterback, he ran track, and he also played basketball. He went on to the Department of Corrections working in Ironwood, Michigan, but he found himself right back here in the Fliver Nation working as a juvenile probation officer. We had a really great conversation. Let's see what he had to say. All right, well, thanks for coming on today, Curtis. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So go ahead and tell us about your playing days here at Kingsford. You were a little bit younger than me, so I never got to play with you, but you were you were right behind me. So tell us about that. Well, I never played football, organized football up until freshman year. And I decided to go out, you know, I had buddies playing, so decided to give it a whirl and uh, played freshman, sophomore, junior and senior year. Uh, was quarterback, defensive back, and punter. Nice. What else what else did you do while you were here at Kingsford? Uh, I also played basketball and ran track. What was your favorite track event? None of them. <laughs> I, I was not a runner, but uh, Coach Holper had me running. He had me probably running the worst races. I, I ran two relays, and those were the 1,600 and 3,200. Then I ran the 400 and 800 open, so uh, he definitely put me in the worst races. Yeah, those My, are those are brutal, especially when you got to run the 800, because if you don't sprint it, you're not going to make it in any kind of good time. Uh, did you work during high school? Yeah, I worked at Shopko all four years. What did you do there? I worked in the back and stock shelves and unloaded trucks and all that good stuff. Standard high school work. Absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, for those of you that if you're listening from afar, the Shopko in Kingsford closed about two years ago. So that was kind of a sad day. That was kind of an icon here in Kingsford. Um, so tell us what you did after high school. You left and you've done a bunch of different things. <laughs> well, I, my initial plan was to go into early education. So I went to Northern Michigan University. And uh, after about a year or two, I, I kind of doubted myself and wasn't too sure if that's the route I wanted to keep going down. So um, my uncle was the state trooper and I, I became interested in law enforcement. So I, I switched majors and, and went into uh, criminal justice and uh, after I graduated at Northern, I, I was looking for different uh, law enforcement opportunities. And unfortunately, for some of uh, my medical reasons, I wasn't able to pursue that. So I ended up going to uh, the Department of Corrections, worked there for a couple years as a corrections officer. Really enjoyed it, but I was living in, in Ironwood, which there's not a whole lot to do in Ironwood, so um, I wanted to get back. I wanted to get back uh, closer to town, uh, be around family. Um, I had previously been on the Brighton Township Fire Department and uh, missed the guys that I was on there, there with. So really, it was a matter of uh, moving back for family and friends. And when I came back, I worked for the Michigan Department of Human Services I was a child protective service uh, investigator as well as a foster care uh, worker, um, case worker. So I did that for a couple of years, decided I wanted to switch positions. So I ended up uh, getting a job at the Dickens County Probate and Juvenile Court as a juvenile probation officer. And I've been doing that for the last nine, nine and a half years. Excellent. So obviously as your cousin, I knew all this, um, <laughs> but, but I, I enjoy hearing that, um, especially how you kind of, you know, you left the area and realized what you had here and came back for family and friends and just the community, uh, in general, you know, and I kind of did the same thing. I was, uh, up at Northern as well. And then after a couple of trips overseas and, and Lance and Gwyn, you know, made my way back to the Fliver nation. So, Excellent. Well, this is a Fliver flashback. So we're going to talk a little football back from 2000, 2001. Is that all right? Correct. Correct. All right. So uh, 
Tell us uh, what's one of your favorite football memories from playing football here at Kingsford. So you're asking me to go back about 20, 24 <laughs> years and, uh, um, and try and remember some things, but uh, I would say probably playing for for the community, you know, playing for the coaches, Coach Wolford, Coach Wilsius, and the other coaches um, and staff, you know, always supportive, um, always to, always willing to help us out if we needed help. Um, not only for football, but growing up uh, as a young man and being a positive influence. Um, and then the fans, you know, the, the fans of Kingsford are, are phenomenal. Um, you know, I remember Iron Mountain Kingsford games and all, all the stands were packed. And that, that wasn't just from fans in Iron Mountain Kingsford, but it was also all over the UP and in Wisconsin and just seeing those stands packed and people, you know, standing around the field and, and watching the game. And, uh, so that was fun, you know, but then I would say my teammates, you know, the memories that I had with my teammates from freshman year uh, up until we graduated. And, you know, a lot of people got to see us at practice or, or playing the games, but not too many got to see us spend time in the locker room and, and spend time off the field and, and away from school and in those memories that that we had during that time and over summer break and uh, so so really it comes down to coaches fans and, and teammates that the wonderful memories that i have hey you mentioned the iron mountain kingsford game i was coaching up in launce and it was a Friday night, we were playing in Calumet. And after the game, we were kind of chatting with their head coach, John Carosi. And he had asked, he goes, hey, I'm going to the Iron Mountain Kingsford game tomorrow. You guys want to come? Because that's back when it was on a Saturday. And so you have people from Calumet driving, you know, over two hours one way just to come to the Iron Mountain Kingsford game. And I know they had similar followings with uh, Nagani and Marquette. Um, that was like a 129 year rivalry. And, uh, you know, those rivalry games is really where it sticks out. And like you were saying before, not just not just for the players, but for the coaches and for the fans, for the entire community. And the one thing I will say about Kingsford fans is they travel well. Um, we had a coach in junior varsity football. We had a family that actually bought a Winnebago and they travel <laughs> and they're I mean, they go, you know, Kingsford fans travel and, and a lot of times we have to travel a long ways to play a football game. So that's, uh, that's excellent. So tell us, uh, tell us a funny story from when you were playing football. I'm sure you, uh, you know, all your buddies on the team, I can think of some of them right now, be uh, hoping you're not telling it about them, but tell us something funny that happened while you're playing. Well, that's kind of a tough question going back, like I said, 20 some years, but, uh, I would say probably one of the cooler memories and, and at times pretty funny was our uh, longtime manager, Terschel, and just how he would interact with the guys and, and the fans, um, you know, and some of the, the silly stuff that he would say, you know, he, he'd be like, hey, number five, I wrecked your driveway and <laughs> totally come out of the blue, um, you know, and even after after we graduate, you know, if you, if you run into him, I don't know if he would after 20 years, but he'd say, hey, number five, you know, he, he remembered everyone's numbers. And um, so I don't know if it's it, if it's necessarily funny, but he made it fun, you know, a different aspect of, of having him on the sidelines. And it was fun. Oh, absolutely. And he'd wear those those crazy pants, right? He always had some kind of crazy Zumba looking pants and uh so you mentioned Tersh, and I walked into the locker room in 2016. So I graduated in 2000. He hasn't seen me in at least 16 years. And I walked through the coach's office. He's sitting there. He goes, hey, 85, rumble at your house tonight. Like he remembered my number from 16 years ago. So I guarantee if you walk in, he would recognize, uh, he would recognize you. Um, so kind of just closing it down here, we have a lot of players who, who watch and families and uh, specifically those uh, ninth graders and eighth graders who are just starting their football career, what is some advice you would give to them? You've been through the program, you've gone off to do, you know, life things, married now with kids and, and still in the community. Um, so what are what's some advice you'd give to those players just starting out or the ones who are currently in the system? Stick with it. You know, that would be my biggest thing from 
from a juvenile probation officer uh, aspect, I see kids all the time. They're playing sports, you know, whether it be football, basketball, volleyball, uh, whatever. Um, and for whatever reason, they stop playing. And, and sometimes within the next year, they find themselves in trouble with the law um, because they're not busy. So I think football uh, specifically teaches you a lot of life lessons. Um, you know, you got to work hard individually and put the time in to make yourself better. Um, and if everyone does that as a team, uh, you're going to succeed. Um, I just saw a quote the other day. It went something along the lines of uh, that would rather take, a, or a, how did it go? I'd rather take a two star recruit with the five star work ethic than a five star recruit with a two star work ethic. So you don't have to be the best player on the team. But if you put in the time and effort, it's going to be recognized and you're going to get playing time. Um, so those days when you don't want to get up early and go to the weight room um, or you're not looking forward to two a days, stick with it because it's worth it. You know, you, you learn how to work as a team and that carries over after you graduate and you get jobs. Um, you know, if you work as a team and you're a team player, you're going to go further in life. Absolutely. That's a great point. I like the stick with it. You know, I've been opening the weight room in the mornings and uh, we got a couple of regulars and they're there every single day. Um, and that's uh, not only does that go noticed, right? That is noticed, but also they're just making themselves better. Um, I do have to make one more. We got to talk about one more thing. All right. One more thing. And the flag behind you actually reminded of it. And if you're watching right now on YouTube, I'm actually going to put up a picture of Curtis. He made a couple of flags for uh, Kingsford Fliver football. One of them is hanging outside of my classroom and one of them is hanging in the weight room. Tell us a little bit about those flags and how you got into woodworking. I don't necessarily know how I came across the flags, but woodworking's always been something that's been interesting to me. And I, I think it probably started from our grandpa. Um, grandpa George, he he was always doing some sort of woodworking and um, made some beautiful furniture. I know I have a, a chest that he made, um, you know, a couple mirrors that, that he made that's just phenomenal work, so. Um, you still have your rocking horse? Yeah, I still have it. Yeah, uh, I do too. Gra our grandpa, Grandpa George Van Dusen, he, uh, he actually, I don't think he graduated high school, but he went to the industrial arts and registered for woodworking classes. And he told the instructor, you got to fail me. You got to fail me so I can sign up for this class again. And basically he was going, so he had access to all the equipment, but he made Curtis and I um, both rocking chairs. I know I still have the beagle. It still sits. Uh, he made these little wooden dogs, a beagle sitting by my, um, by my, uh, in my living room. So, that's really awesome. We're going to end it there. Curtis, I want to say thanks a lot for coming on and uh, best of luck as we move through this pande pandemic and hopefully we can get together soon for a campfire. Absolutely. I got plenty of wood. I like it. Have a good one. You too. That was 2002 Kingsford High School graduate Curtis Van Dusen, quarterback for the Kingsford Flivers. You can find more about the Kingsford Flivers on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also follow our blog, and all of those links are down in the show notes. So until next time, this is Coach Van Dusen. Win in the classroom, win in the community, and win on the field.